So we are discussing solutions of momentum equations, which are Navier-Stokes, at moderate Reynolds numbers. Uh, before we talked about Stokes equations, and those are developed from Navier-Stokes when the Reynolds number is low, so the inertia term can be neglected. At moderate Reynolds numbers, the Reynolds number is not small enough for Stokes flow, and it's not large enough for unstable or turbulent flow. It turns out that the uh, equations are still tractable. We can solve them if we assume a steady parallel flow, for example. Uh, in that case, the inertia term in the equation drops out, but not because the Reynolds number is small. It drops out because uh, of the combination of continuity equation uh, with the uh, parallel flow assumption. If the uh, du dx velocity gradient in the x direction is equal to zero, then that forces the velocity component in the other direction uh, to be zero as well. Uh, so the we have a form of Navier-Stokes equations that is fairly simple. It's the gradient in x in the x direction. The Navier-Stokes equations reduced to uh, d by dx of p plus the body force uh, rho gz equals uh, mu times the second derivative of u with respect to z. So that's the viscous term. And in the y and z direction, it's the derivatives of the same expression p plus the body force. The y derivative of z equals to zero and the z derivative of that, of, of that expression equals to zero. Uh, so that simplifies things quite a lot. In particular, because of the fact that d by dz of p plus rho gz is equal to zero, that means that that expression in the brackets is not a function of z. And therefore, its x derivative is not the function of z. And why we're being concerned uh, about the function of z or not is that um, we can integrate the x direction equation twice. When we integrate that we have this expression for u velocity component which contains the derivative with respect to x of p plus rho gz uh, times the uh, z square over 2 uh, over mu uh, plus the linear term uh, some constant times z plus another constant that uh, appears from integration. So everything is fine there uh, and the specific form of the solution depends on the boundary conditions, it depends on those um, expressions and values for c1 and c2. And one example that we're considering is the coet flow. Coet flow is the flow between two parallel plates uh, there is a fluid between them and the one of the plates is fixed and the other one is moving parallel to uh, to the bottom plate. Uh, so the uh, boundary conditions are just no slip. So velocity um, u at both plates matches the velocity of the plate. So at the bottom is zero, at the top it's capital U, which is the speed with which the top plate is, is moving. And the viscosity drags the fluid along. So if, uh, so the, the specific shape of the velocity profile depends on the value of the pressure gradient in x direction. If, uh, if there is no pressure gradient, so we, we're not driving the fluid by pressure at all, so only viscosity drags it along, then it's a linear profile. You could see from the expression uh, of the velocity. If the pressure gradient is favorable, so the pressure decreases in the x direction, then the velocity is always positive, so it, it will actually be uh, a bit higher than that linear profile and the, the shape would be um, different. But if the pressure gradient is positive, so you, as you move from the location on the left to location on the right, the pressure increases, uh, so some of the fluid would be pushed backwards and there would be a balance between the 
uh, flow due to the motion of the top plate and the flow in the opposite direction due to the pressure gradient. And the, it's possible to have a negative velocity values um, across that gap between the plates. In fact, you could uh, find the value of the pressure gradient that would be required to have the overall zero flow rate between the plates if you integrate that velocity profile. Yeah. So, um, and we consider another example, the Poiseuille flow, which is the uh, axisymmetric equivalent of the Coet flow. Both plates are fixed, or for example, it can represent uh, a flow in a pipe. So the boundaries at the top of the bo uh, and the bottom of the cross section of the pipe are fixed and the thing is entirely driven by the pressure gradient. So there would be a parabolic velocity profile. Um, the uh, implication of this flow situation uh, is that there is a resistance due to viscosity uh, to the flow. So the pressure uh, in in uh, the practical engineering applications, we spend the work to generate pressure that drives the flow. And uh, that pressure is used to overcome the friction losses as the fluid is pumped through the channel or a pipe. So the, you could show that the resistance coefficient is uh, inversely proportional to the Reynolds number based on the diameter of the pipe. So um, if you pump fuel, for example, from the storage location to the uh, fueling station um, in a long uh, pipeline system, make sure that the uh, uh, friction losses do not exceed the energy content of the fluid.